A Jupyter notebook is basically a sequence of cells, these grey rectangles that you see here. Let's see first how to handle cells, and then what we can write inside them. To handle cells, we always click on the left side of the cell and make sure that we see this blue line, which indicates that the current cell is the active one. Then, to create a new cell below the existing one, we click on the left of the cell and we press B for below, or the plus button up here in the notebook. You see that the blue bar has now moved to the next cell to indicate that it's the active one. To delete a cell we don't need, we again click on the left side of the cell, the blue bar appears and then we press D twice, or we click on the scissor icon. To undo a cell operation, we press Z, or we go to Edit, Undo Cell Operation. Similarly, to redo a cell operation, we press Shift Z, or we go to Edit, Redo Cell Operation. If we want to copy a cell, we click on the left side of the cell and then we press C or this icon, and to paste, we press V, or this icon. Finally, in the top bar, under Edit, we can see all the cell operations we can do, undo or redo a cell operation, or delete a cell, as we have seen, but also select and deselect all cells, move them up or down, and split or merge them. And that's basically it about cell handling. So now, what do we write inside these grey rectangles called cells? There are at least four different things we can put inside the cell. Text, equations, images and code. Let's start with text. Knowing how to write text in a notebook is fundamental because notebooks are not a mere sequence of code cells, but their main aim is to integrate narrative and code to make our workflows human-readable. So, to make a cell a text cell, we click on the left as usual and then we can either press M or we can go to the drop-down menu up here and select Markdown. You see that the brackets on the left side of the cell disappear and when we click inside the cell we can start writing. For example, this workflow takes data from the study XYZ and creates a graph. We then render the cell as plain text by pressing Shift Return if we are on Mac OS or Shift Enter if we are on Windows. Or we can go to Run, Run Selected Cells. It is good practice to give a notebook a title, so we create a cell above our current one by clicking on the left again and then pressing A for above. And we write our title, Sharp Analysis of the Dataset XYZ. The Sharp indicates that this is a title. In fact, when we run the cell, by pressing Shift Return, we see that we get a large bold font. Then, it is good practice to also create paragraphs to describe the various steps of our workflow. For example, loading data, tidying data, creating the graph, and dependencies. For these subtitles, we use Double Sharp to have a smaller font. Markdown is a simplified form of HTML, and you can think of one sharp as H1, two sharps as H2, etc. To write in Markdown, the syntax to know is very, very simple and short, and you can find plenty of great documentation in the web. While describing our workflow, we can enrich our narrative with equations, which we can write in LaTeX. The only thing to underline here is that if we use two dollar signs before and after the equation, the equation is rendered by itself in the middle of the text. Instead, if we use only one dollar sign, the equation is going to be in line with the rest of the text. The last element we can use to enrich our narrative is images, which can be a scheme of a pipeline, the representation of a neural network, etc. To import an image in the notebook, we simply type exclamation mark, open and close squared brackets, and then the name of the image file in between round brackets. In my case, the image is in the same folder as the notebook, but if the image is in another folder, just type the whole file path. Ok, we have quickly seen what a Jupyter notebook is and all the basic elements we need to create the narrative that describes our code and makes it human-readable. So now, it's time to start coding. Let's have an intro to Python in the next video.